experiencing content brought to you by me wait me so there's something I've been thinking a lot about and uh, this sort of tracks back to my days in film school where all of your homework assignments were writing essays and essentially your whole job was to convince the professor who could not be shaken uh, that your point was correct. You had to basically debate your argument. And I'm not very good at debating or arguing, but I am very good at bullshitting things. Uh, but I don't want to bullshit you. But uh, something that I wrote a lot about in film school, learning about art and, and really trying to dig into the meat and potatoes of works of art and why they are made and how we look at them, is something called author's intent, which is this weird, I guess, theory that whatever the author intends the work to mean or intended for why it was made or what it's supposed to represent or signify is the only thing that matters. Whatever the artist basically conjures up or whatever the artist thinks, or whatever the artist says in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, that's all that matters. And I have been sort of on the other side of the case of this theory, which is author's intent doesn't matter. Once that work of art is out into the open, once it is in the hands of the public and we can play it or watch it or listen to it or experience it in whatever way we want, uh, that's what matters. It's like every individual's personal experience, that's the, that's like the intent. That's where you get the, the meaning. That's, you know, that's what's significant to me is how I look at something. Um, so if two different people were to walk into the Le at uh, in in Paris and look at the uh, Mona Lisa. One person can say, eh, "I don't I don't get it. It's just a it's just some woman. I don't I don't know why is the big deal. You know, it's just a small little painting." And another person can look at it and and cry and and think it's it's a masterwork. Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about authors' intent and looking at different games in this way because I think all games are works of art. And one of my favorite games of all time is Katamari Damacy, uh, which you're watching now. And it, apparently it came from this uh, this weird experiment, this weird uh, project where Kaita Takahashi, I hope I said that right, uh, wanted to create a simple, easy game to play where the gameplay was, was so basic and it was so fun and enjoyable and there was a lot of novelty to it. And that sort of like, that, that idea, that kernel of a nugget, uh, blossomed into what Katamari Damacy is, which is this amazing snowball simulator uh, of just weird cultures, and you just roll a ball and you pick up objects, and, it, and it, I think it's amazing. I love that game, and there are obviously a lot of things about it that I love, including the art style and and the ridiculousness, the silliness of it, and the music the soundtrack is, is stellar. But to me, it was always not just about all the individual parts coming together as a sum, I sort of look at that game and I think this is this speaks to just human waste and the amount of garbage we leave around and how humans are messy and how we don't take care of the planet and how it takes an intergalactic ro you know a family a royalty this prince has to come down and you know collect all this detritus that we left around and roll it up into something and replace the stars and our constellations because we destroyed them and I always thought that was this weird beautiful idea that was just this nice little meta commentary and I'm not sure many other people sort of read that game that way but that's always how I view it but again does the author's intent matter or does my interpretation matter or does yours like you know, when two different people are playing that game obviously the thing they're gonna talk about most is or, or the controls you know, a little weird. Oh, is this game actually fun? Do I enjoy whatever's going on? Do I buy into this world? And for me, it was less about that, and it was more about, like, why does this game exist? Why do I think this game is saying something interesting? Uh, how is the story and the world and, and the mechanics of the gameplay interconnected into one cohesive thing that is trying to speak to something? And I think all art is trying to answer the question, what does it mean to be human? And it doesn't really matter whether your movie is talking foods like Sausage Party or, you know, the Brave Little Toaster if it's just appliances. It all speaks to being human, because humans made those things. So, 
what you know what does it mean to be a human leaving shit around your house and then a tiny little prince has to roll up all that crap that you left around your house or what does it mean for you know cities and urban decay and just this giant tangled mess of a zoo just this crazy you know urban sprawling jungle that's be picked up in just one fell swoop with a bunch of other countries around the globe and just rolled up into a ball and shoved into into the sky like we're launching garbage off of the planet. I think that is this weird, beautiful idea. Um, and it sort of spurs into other stuff that I really like. Uh, for instance, Resident Evil 4. I love Resident Evil 4. I think that's one of the greatest games ever made. And obviously you can just sort of look at that, you know, uh, on paper and say, oh yeah, it's a survival horror action game made by Capcom and Shinji Mikami, and you could just look at it and think, oh my god, like, the mechanics and the level design and the weird sense of humor and uh, upgrading your guns and all that stuff. I mean, it all sort of clicks. It all comes together, even though they're all weird sort of disparate parts. Uh, but to me, I always looked at the end credits, and I was mesmerized the first time I had beaten that game. I sat there stunned and chilled. I'm watching this credit sequence, I had gone through the entire game, and initially the first part of it is in Spain, and you're fighting these villagers, and there's this weird occult church thing going on, but then you get whisked away to a castle, and then you get put into like a military island. But the end credits go all the way back to the beginning of how it all started, and I'm watching these people buy into this zealot, and I'm sitting there thinking, is this like a commentary on like organized religion? Like, are these people being indoctrinated into a cult, and they're buying into a false prophet, and then it sort of just corrupts them from the inside and turns them into monsters who have to lurch out and grab other people and infect them with this ideology? Like, am I reading into that too much? Can you read into things too much? Does that matter? Is that good? Uh, I, I had so many questions, and that's sort of how I trailed into, into film school. Um, because I, I don't think people can read too much into things. I think you can interpret and look at and even jokingly argue for whatever the hell you want, because that's why the art exists, that's why they're there, is to watch them or listen to them or play them and experience them and then have a discussion about what they're trying to say. I mean, it's there, you can't deny that those people got wrapped up in the Saddler's, you know, scheme or whatever. Like... That's there! That's that's actually the plot of the game. This small town in the middle of nowhere uh, with these nice people who, you know, would probably just go on with their lives and farm uh, got wrapped up in this thing. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, boy, like... I mean, if this game really went any further, like, people would be talking about that to this day. Uh, but there's little traces of it, like, I, I get this weird vibe of, like, the Crusades sort of, like, being this, like, weird, like, point in history that sort of, like, sort of flows through that game. But, like, again, there's a lot of horror and gore and action gameplay and President's Daughters and what are you buying? You know, there's all that stuff in the game. Um, but I, I feel like we can talk about games on a thematic level. We can go through the 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 meat and potatoes of a game and suss out what works and what doesn't work audio-wise or visual-wise or, you know, graphics, how it runs, how it plays. But, like, on another level, there really is... There are things to talk about in a lot of games you wouldn't think of. I mean, it doesn't just have to be gone home and coming of age and sexuality and being repressed and, and how your family's history works into your lives and the lives of your children and like there's all this interesting stuff to talk about but for the most part people just sort of look at walking simulator they look at narrative games and they think like oh yeah that's where all that st sort of stuff comes from uh so i can read novels and i can play those games but when i get to call of duty i want to play call of duty but like even call of duty i mean there's i mean it's relatively simple but there i mean it does speak to the nature of war does speak to the nature of chain of command and you know, there's a whole hero's journey thing going on in a lot of these games. That stuff is just sort of taken from Star Wars, and that's taken from Flash Gordon serials, and that's taken from the Iliad and the Odyssey. Storytelling, there's no way to, to just rip that out uh, from games and just say, nope, here's the game, it has nothing to do with anything going on in the real world. I think that's bullshit. I think 
people who make games have thoughts and ideas and opinions, and it just sort of weasels its way into these games, uh, no matter what you do. Um, and I think one of the best examples of someone who's doing that really well, who's really trying to bring in bigger, more complicated ideas and, and bringing them to the front is Jonathan Blow uh, with Braid and The Witness. And as much as I really, really, really love those games and what they're trying to say, uh, again, I feel like people sort of get wrapped up in the gameplay first, which again, that makes sense. You know, like, I wouldn't want to stop anyone from talking about how brilliant the design in The Witness is, or the art direction, or how the island is interconnected, or the puzzles on top of puzzles. I mean, that's why that game works. But it's impossible to play The Witness and not look around and think, there are these audio logs, and there's this weird story going on, and there's this secret cutscene at the end. Like, there's more stuff to dig into, and I, I feel like people smarter than me are doing that, but that's not breaching through the industry, like, that's not the thing that sells copies, and it's not the thing that people care about, and it's not the thing that Reddit investigates. Reddit investigates, you know, ARG, like, they investigate, like, weird viral campaigns for I Love Bees and Sombra, which, again, is fine, I love that stuff, that stuff is, is great, and it makes our industry unique, but I don't want Jonathan Blow to just be, like, the only one sort of just blown in the wind. You know, not to bring Bob Dylan into this, but like Bob Dylan understood that like you can make great songs that are easy to listen to, but there's more going on underneath the surface. Um, again, this point is very stupid. I feel like people should know this. This is obvious, but for some reason, uh, games aren't discussed on a thematic, richer, contextual level. Like, like for some reason, like we're just not willing to go that far. I don't know why. Like, Octodad, Dadliest Catch, like. There's some stuff about masculinity and being a father. Again, it, that's not the point of the game. It doesn't really speak to it, but like, it's technically there. You can sort of suss it out. You can talk about it. You can sort of bring it out of the, the silly, wacky, tripping over an octopus in a suit gag. Um, so yeah, so I, I hope that, that you take it as an exercise to, to look at games in that way. Um, and hopefully we can sort of start more discussions or I can just start more videos about it because I love talking about this shit uh, and showing you clips of my favorite games ever. So go play Katamari Damacy, go play The Witness, go play Resident Evil 4, and uh, hopefully you can play different games and think uh, about something different when you sort of step away from it.